Steve hasn't been on this channel for a long time, but I play with him most often out of anyone. I use my Tuesday rounds with him as a way to relax and often don't film, but Steve wanted to see his swing on camera because he was having trouble with the driver. He bought himself a Ping G400 and he'd been smoking it for months, but lately he'd been hitting a banana fade which was killing his mojo. Let's not forget, he also has a cropped left knee and got back spasms on the back nine. The man was a rugby player and tradesman for years. This is how to break 80 with a banana cut, featuring Freaky Steve. This is where Steve is a maestro. He uses his 9-iron after a tip from a European PGA to a pro. The well-known South African pro told him, scrap the sand wedge, just use the 9-iron. Great par, great par. Great shot. I know what's wrong with my... It won't get me there. I know where my swing's wrong. Ooh, that's tasty. Um, a little rightish. That looks okay. Steve moved to the claw grip a while ago as a way to get rid of the yips. He told me he used to be the best putter he had ever known, but suddenly one day he couldn't even sink an eight incher. At one stage, he was even putting with his eyes closed. I've heard the claw grip has helped every person who has ever used it. I think it was Faldo on TV talking about Justin Rose and how the new grip helped Justin, as well as other pros who started using it. It's working for Steve, that's for sure. Just on, just on. Oh, just off. Good shot there. With the green sloping into us, quite steeply back to front, you want to stay short of the hole, and if you do go slightly long, you need to remember to stroke the putt much softer as the grain and slope will take it away from you. Steve forgot that. He usually hits this driver into the water on the right, so with his banana slice, he teared up on the right side of the tee to hit away from his water hazard. That's what makes this hole so good, is that you may be hitting away from one problem, but chances are, you'll be hitting toward another. Oh, what a baby. Great shot, Steve. Kirkland's signature balls are boost long, but they don't sit down in the greens. I never thought I would reach these bunkers in my life into the breeze from the back tees i've gone past them here to where miss no lee is standing and that is a beast and i hit this little piece of an eight yard fairway but they do not sit down worth a damn
If there's anywhere to miss this green, it's short right. If you go long, you're downhill, down grain, onto this tiny little green. If you go left, you're hitting onto the side slope, which means your chip will need to start eight feet left of the pin. You're only getting up and down from those positions three out of 10 times. Steve's missed it perfectly, leaving the straightest chip possible. Oh, in baby, four time. <laughs> you got that. He was born a scrambling man. Sit, sit, sit. Oh. That's okay then. No, I think it's fine, is it? Stay on this. Stay on the front. That's okay then. Chip in. In there, boy. In there. Yes, man. This is a tough shot and only a straight shot or draw will work. Any fades will have issues. That means you're shaping it toward the hazard. A double cross that goes to the right will leave you in the trees with a hell of a long approach shot. Come on, boy. Aye. Let me find some more on the left side of the wall. I've got to stop doing that. We let three groups through at a turn, so we didn't have any pressure since they were speeding around on golf carts. This little stop got Steve's muscles cold because I've never seen him cold top one. Well, either that or this tree was right in his banana slice line. I may have to take that back. I believe that one sat down very nice and quickly. One little hop and then it just stopped dead from 70 yards. It's just dead into the grain. What a putter! Hit one from over there. 
and he looks like he's laid up perfectly actually no he might be up at the green there not a bad shot at all I just forgot that I was following him because I've just pumped one down the left side here with the high draw like I said and it is hoop time faded just short of the trees smack an iron up the side of the green chip and putt 450 yards take the four GTFO way of the player style good putt <laughs> okay, I have to recant my earlier statements. Costco Kirkland signature does sit down. That was a six iron from 191. It's got backwards about six inches. Not bad. Oh, shot, Steve. Oh, man. Get it. Shorter than perfect. Oh, that's a tasty one. Delicious. Oh, yeah, perfect. Perfect. Chip and a putt. Just in case the message here isn't clear, scrambling is not just a fun stat to keep track of on the PGA, it's the most critical part of our games as amateurs. Unless we're yeah, practicing on the range a lot. We're missing a lot of greens with our irons and hybrids. A putter, a three-foot ruler, and a carpet is all you need to get the ball rolling online and staying online with a sweet strike. You too were born a scrambling man. Get up, oh yes man, 63. This is where Steve is one of those infuriating match play guys. He almost always saves no worse than a bogey. He is mentally tough enough to not give up on a hole and will do whatever it takes to reduce the damage. Reducing damage and missing in good areas is good golf. After a puffy shot, play a smart one. It's on the green. What a putter, man. What did you do? Ooh. Did you bang it? Top side. Great shot. Perfect. Next to the hole. Oh, what a shot. Yes, man. Oh, didn't move. Did not move. I played Pan Lang in Yangon with my host, the Hype Man, who told me the tee shots there were tight. When we were on the tee boxes, I found them quite wide compared to Dynasty. The camera really flattens and widens things out quite a bit. Anyone we bring to Dynasty craps themselves on all the tees. Oh, what a shot.
What a finishing hole at Da Nasty. The 18th hole isn't long, but it's tight. The water right and left is always in play, and if there was some elevation to this hole where the green were above the tee box by maybe 10 yards, this would be better than a 18th hole. It doesn't suit the banana slice as Steve knows, because the fairway runs toward the water on the right. He hit a straight one, but after aiming for the slice, it hit the trees and went into the water. How many times would the water ball mean a double bogey for us on the final hole? We'd just be like, oh well, I've blown my chance of breaking 80, what ifs? Not for Steve the Scrapper, he wants that thing in the hole, in as few as possible. What about... Steve bogeyed holes that were low handicap stroke indexes. He took advantage of his short game and even with the struggles off the tee, he made it work. He just jammed with his shot shape for the day. He didn't fight himself, where a lot of people do, always living in hope of a mythical straight shot. Play your shape, never give up. Hit a smart shot after a puffy shot. Reduce the damage to guarantee the bogey at worst. Scramble like a superhuman. But how? Find your shape, accept it, and aim for it. You do not have to hit a draw or shape it both ways on command to play good golf. Avoid victimhood and realize all your actions are yours. Be the fighter who fights for every shot. Drop the ego after a bad shot and hit the shot that sets up the next one within your comfortable zone. Get the ball to a place where you know you are fire. That can be your 50 yard shot, your 80 yard wedge, your 125 yard 50 degree, it's up to you. Avoid the driving range completely if you like, but hit the practice green like a demon. That is all, be like Steve, be freaky, do what the others aren't doing, because what they're doing isn't working.